Today, we're going to be discussing maybe one of the most important questions in real estate, which is when to buy and when to wait. Should I buy now? Should I wait? I'm a first time home buyer. Should I continue renting? I might be in that position to buy, but it's a stretch. Should I buy? Should I wait? It's a conversation we have all the time. Um, my name is David Caldwell. I'm here with Vanessa Heisler. It's awesome to have her on this call today because she's going to be a wealth of wisdom for us when we look at before she was in real estate, now that she's in real estate, transitioning people. So I'm super excited. Hopefully you guys will find this educational. While you're watching along, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments and then we can get back to those on a later video. But let's just get into it, Vanessa. You actually were just going through three points with me and I'm just going to let you kick it off and let's just start there with what we were just talking about off camera. Okay. Yeah. So when you are trying to decide between buying a home or to continue renting, um, there are three main factors that you need to think about. Um, one of them, the most important, the, the, the main focus, you know, in your day to day life is you're a renter. You want to avoid rising rent. So every year we know that you get a rent increase pretty much. So number one, you want to think about, should I avoid rising rent? Um, number two for owning a home is you would own a tangible asset. And then the third one to consider is that you would be growing your wealth over time um, if you were to own a home. So how do you make that happen? Yeah. Well, let's talk about that first one in your experience when you were working in property management with rent increases. <clears throat> and then I'll talk about my personal experience as well from that standpoint. Yeah. So, you know, when thinking about this video, um, I was thinking back on my experience. So I was a property manager for 10 plus years. Um, and, you know, every year you send out rent increase notices. I was trying to think back about how, how like, is it 100% of the time? Is it, and I really do think that about 99% of the time I sent an annual rent increase notice. And, you know, in the city of Portland, um, the maximum rent increase per year, last I checked was 9%. So when you think about it, every single year that you rent, you could potentially be paying, you know, 9% more in, in rent every single year. When you own a home, you can lock in a mortgage payment that will not change year after year. You'll know yeah. what you're going to pay for 30 years. So yeah. something to think well, about there. I'm going to, I'm going to combine number one and number three, because, yeah. you know, I bought some rental properties over the year and I actually tend to be a landlord that or a uh, property owner. I don't want to like call myself a landlord. I, I tend to be a property owner when I have tenants in a property. I don't increase the rent because I don't want them to move. Right. But ultimately what they're missing out on, and I've talked to some of my tenants about this before because you end up having relationships with them is the benefits of home ownership. You know, I had some, I had some really nice people in a home that I owned for about five years. In that five-year period, the home you know went from 269 to probably a value like close to 450,000. You know, it was in Sherwood, it was a hot market, lots of appreciation was made. I never increased their rent, but they never built any equity. So their rent was stable, but they were renting that home from me for basically the same that they could have purchased it for, right? I had a little bit of cash flow in case there needed to be some repairs. And I think that's something people don't think about too, you know, and that was the third point was is the equity that they would build. So maybe you're somewhere and you're going, well, this doesn't resonate with me because my landlord doesn't raise my rent. Most people's rent does get increased for sure. Right. Maybe you're an outlier where it doesn't, but then you just miss out on the equity. And you know, the reality for me as a as a homeowner who rents properties out, I like getting great people in there and keeping their rent as stable as possible so I can keep them for a long time. That's just to my benefit, you know, because then I don't have to work on the house. I don't have to do different things, you know, to it necessarily. They usually keep it in good shape if the longer they live there. Um, all the while, the market's appreciating and I'm getting to um, participate in the market appreciation. And I think that's a big reason, your point number three, to be a homeowner 
um, I think it's the U.S. government. I don't know if it's the census or or who puts out this stat, but the average net worth of a homeowner is 40 times greater than that of a renter. Right. And to piggyback on that, statistically, we have learned that, you know, every 15 years, home values have increased in Portland. So, you know, think about how long you've been renting. You could have doubled your, you know, your home value if you were a seller. Yeah. And that, and that increase Vanessa is talking about, it's like, it's a, it's a doubling of the value of the home basically. So we have a chart that we show a lot, which is 30 years of Portland appreciation, you know, through 2020, 2022, the end of 2022, there was 26 years in the last 30 of home appreciation. This is the first year in a decade we won't see home values go up. There's gonna be a moderate decrease of about 3%. And most people are getting some closing costs. So let's just round up and say, maybe the average home price has come down five or 6%. From a price perspective, this has been the best buying opportunity year in a decade, right? We think that'll probably continue a little bit into 2024, but we are starting to see this rate cycle coming down as rates become more affordable more people have a tendency to jump into the housing market, which makes it more competitive, which takes away some of those things. And that's what brings back market appreciation. So next year, we're just going to say, hey, in the last 25 years, the market has seen appreciation. In the last 30, there's been five down years in 25. That is a pretty safe bet. When you think about an asset class, getting 25 years of positive growth in sales price in the last 30, that's why the average homeowner has a net worth 40 times greater than that of a renter. Most people can't save money at the same rate their property appreciates over time. And right now, in the last 30 years, the annual rate of appreciation is about six and a half percent. So think about, you know, even on a $500,000 home, six and a half percent appreciation, you know, annually over the last 30 years is quite the return. Right. I think the hardest thing for a lot of people is just getting into the house. You know, yeah. they have un they they are unsure about what it even takes. They maybe really just can't afford it. Yeah. So, you know, the best thing that people can do right now, I do think right now is a sweet spot in the market where if you can afford to buy, if you can afford the monthly payment. You know, which is pretty much close to a lot of rents. You can afford to get into something, even if it's a condo, start out small and then, you know, put your time into it, build that wealth, take the money and move up. Um, you know, in 20 yeah. in, or in 2007, I bought my first property. Mm-hmm. It was a $213,000 townhouse, which right now people might go, oh my gosh, that sounds so cheap. It was right before the Great Recession. At one point, that $213,000 townhouse was probably only worth $150,000. Now, we lived there for, uh, let me think, four, five, six years. I can't even remember. By the time we sold it, we sold it with not only an equity gain from where we purchased at it, albeit it wasn't humongous, but also we had paid off a lot of that mortgage. And that enabled us to go into the next house, which at the time felt like the dream house. It felt like, man, this is where I'm going to raise my family. This is this is the dream. And without buying that first townhouse, which wasn't ideal for me at the time, I don't know if I would have been able to make that equity transfer. So to your point, just being able to get into something that works that allows you to start participating in market appreciation and being a homeowner, there's such an advantage to that. I do think a lot of people in our you know, age bracket, we're the average first time home buyer now, you know, it's almost a 40 year old. Um, they're not always starting out exactly where they want to in an asset, but down payments can be significant now, you know, 5% of $600,000 is a significant amount of money to a lot of people. Right. Yeah. I mean, 3% of $350,000 condo though, that's way more attainable, $15,000. And then these days right now, which is why I was saying this is a sweet spot. You know, I've been getting closing costs paid for uh, interest rate buy downs. Like it is way more affordable to buy something right now. Well, and let's think about like the buying experience of 2021. You're helping a buyer in 2021. Let's, let's contrast today versus 2021. What was it like in 2021? 
Oh my gosh. You would find a house, love it, offer on it, but then find out, oh my gosh, there's like, you know, you, you talk about offering on it. You want to offer. Okay. So, hey, here's a house. We love this house. We want to put an offer in. Okay. Let me see, first of all, how many offers there are. Okay. So right now we have eight offers. Uh, so it's basically, you know, me trying to go to the listing agent saying, what do we have to do to get this house? A lot of the times it was, you know, a, a, an asking price way over the list price, yeah. waiving all kinds of contingencies. Like it was not fun to be a we'll buyer. Pay we'll pay, well, it's a $550,000 house. We'll pay fifty dollars to $100,000 more. We won't ask for repairs. We'll let you live there for free for two or three months before you move into the next house. You know, contrasted with today, you know, yeah. You're going to get a discount on the front side, most likely, you know, of the sales price, you're going to get a discount on the back side, meaning they're probably going to pay some amount of your closing costs to help you have affordability in your rate. And then if there's repairs, they're most likely going to do a significant number of those repairs. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I think a lot about like, which market would I like to be a buyer in? And it feels more scary to be a buyer in a marketplace like today, because payments are higher, which is what's created this opportunity to negotiate. But I don't wanna stand in line to buy a house. You know, I'd much rather have the ability to negotiate because over a 10 year, 20 year period, I'm gonna refinance my mortgage and get that lower payment. I wanna have some time to shop because I'm not someone who loves to make quick decisions. You know, so I, th I think about like, the atmosphere in which we're buying in. And when you zoom out on real estate as an asset, it's never scary. You know, like I went through my first tenure as a homeowner, basically four years where the market declined, the worst four years in Portland real estate in 30. Mm -hmm. And I can give you tons of benefits of owning that property, how it positively impacted my life, how it positively impacted my family, how it positively impacted my net worth. And I'm sure there were some days back then, I can't remember them where I didn't feel good about that property as an asset, you know, you owe $200,000 on something that's worth 150. Mm -hmm. But the thing is the real estate market as an asset has proven over time, you know, it always comes back. And that's an extreme example that I just used. You know, this year values have come down 3% on the front end. Lots of properties have still experienced uh, in areas appreciation, not even the whole Portland Metro area is down. Right. right. Yeah, I, when I think about, you know, what I rather have right now or, you know, a couple of years ago when interest rates were super low and, and, you know, the monthly payment was more affordable, it, it seems so much more safe, to be honest, right now to buy because of what I'm seeing sellers give away from their side. You know, you can get your interest rate down by up to 3% less than what they currently are. So you can you can have a really similar payment for the first couple of years right now. Um, and you have the time to look at the house, come back, make a decision instead of just having to decide right on the spot, which yeah. was really scary for a lot of people. And let's talk about what that means, right? Like if you look at the average sales price of a home in Portland right now, it's about $600,000 and it's 6.6% .6 your payment, you know, if taxes were 1% of the sales price and insurance, your payment would be roughly $3,600. Well, if you did a 2-1 buy down, not even a 3-1 buy down that Vanessa just referenced, a 2-1 buy down and got your payment or your interest rate down the first year to 4.6, your payment's $3,100. So there are ways right now to negotiate significant savings in monthly payment. And we know that most people, when they're buying a house, you have to love the house. You have to love the neighborhood. You have to like really think about that investment. But for most people, it does come down to payment. And if you look at our industry right now, it's all these agents. We're all celebrating rates coming down. I'm convinced that, you know, if you're watching this, you probably didn't know that the average sales price home at 6.6% was $3,700, or that you could go down to that 4.6 and get the payment down to 3,100. We know that most people are buying a house like they're buying a car. Most consideration is on monthly payment as it should be. Right, yeah. And with all of that to say, if you can afford the monthly payment and you love the house, 
it makes sense to purchase it instead of continuing to be a renter. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about like, where would I start? Like, do I start with a real estate agent? Do I start talking to a mortgage broker? Do I go to my bank? Like, I, I think I might be able to buy. I don't know where to start. What would your advice be? Yeah. If you want to figure out if you can afford to buy, I would say the first thing you want to do is connect with a, a realtor. Um, ask your friends, ask your family if they have had a positive experience with, you know, a previous realtor. Um, and then they will have really good connections with lenders that have been, um, you know, helpful in, in their transactions. And then together, you know, we form this team, realtor and buyer. Then we go together to the lender so that we're on a team and we can figure out what makes this the best sense for your specific situation. So, yeah, I agree. Somewhere deep on our YouTube channel, we have a video about like assembling your team. Like mm -hmm. if you're going to buy a house and you're right on, it's like, you need to work with someone that you have trust with because you're going to go, you know, whether you buy a 200, 300, 400, $500,000, uh, $2 million house, it's a significant asset. It should be treated as such having a real tree you trust, having them work with a lender with you that everybody trusts to put together that team, to put together the strategy is so important in a market like we are today. Go, going back to 2021, you know, I hated that market because it didn't feel like you could offer a ton of strategy except for like pay a lot of money, give away the farm. I hope I'm kind of friends with the listing agent so we have a competitive advantage. You know, and today, especially when you're negotiating and negotiating firmly, you know, and, and representing a buyer and maybe a seller isn't getting what they want, man, that team does become a really important piece of it. Because if you're going to negotiate firmly, you have to be able to execute and do what you say you're going to do. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I love working with a lender that I have worked with in the past and trust because, you know, I have this buyer who has this specific you know, amount that they cannot go over for payment. And so it becomes like kind of a strategy session with me and the lender and to figure out, okay, if we ask for 3%, you know, three, two, one buy down, what will the payment look like? Um, so, you know, yeah, having a team that is working for you and rooting for you and like truly trying to figure out how we can make this happen. If owning a home is, you know, your desire, connecting with a team, of yeah. um, professionals is really important. You, we've answered this question. You've answered this question, but I'm just going to answer it, or I'm going to ask it really directly, so we can just have it on video. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, hey, I, I want to buy a house, but I just want to rate. I just want to wait for rates to be in the fives because I want a lower payment. Yeah. So does everyone else? Everybody else is waiting right now. Why would you wait when you can get? an interest rate in the fives with my help um, and negotiating an interest rate buy down. When everyone else is waiting for the interest rate to go down, it's going to create the same situation as 2021 with, you know, offering way over list price, hoping and praying that you get the house instead of just finding a house you love right now, offering with competitive, you know, rate buy down um, to get your payment at a comfortable spot and then knowing you what you offer and getting the house. Yeah. Stress free. How, how about this one? I, someone texted me this the other day. Well, I think home values are going to fall 40% in 2024. Okay. So what if, I mean, they're not going to period, but what if we do have a down year? Real estate is like the long game. It's not about how to get rich in two years. You know, so it, it makes sense to buy if you're planning to live in this home for five plus years. If you can stay in it for 15, then we statistically can say with a lot of certainty that your home will most likely be worth double. So, you know, find a home you love, plan to live in it for a while, and it will work out for you, even if your home values go down a little bit in a year. Yeah. So, and I agree. And I think for anyone who thinks like we are in this big, huge housing bubble, you know, getting a permit on a home to build a home in the Portland metro area and most municipalities is like close to $80,000. And what does that mean? We'll never have home affordability. 
right? Like that's, that's a harsh reality, but there's this whole other thing. We just went through one of the most challenging 12 month periods in real estate in the Portland Metro area. And as you know, I've been a real estate agent for almost 20 years for as long as I can remember. And as far as the data shows us, you know, look where rates are, look where affordability is and home values barely slid. I mean, we had an almost insignificant decrease in housing prices. If you think about it, when you zoom out, right? Hey, I, I, I bought a house in 2022. The average homeowner, the average experience was a $613,000, $613,000 house. And today it's $600,000, you know, and now we're starting to see rates slide and with rates sliding, if this trend continues, demand increases. It's hard to think about a situation where home values decline that much. You know, hey, if interest rates stay, go the other way and stay close to seven, seven and a half, it's easy to think of a scenario where maybe rates do decline 5%, maybe a catastrophic event is 10, right? But even then, when you zoom out, right, and you live at home for a long period of time, you know, we're talking about guessing the market, which is very challenging. You know, I love Warren Buffett. He doesn't try to get the best deal on things. He tries to get a great asset. And he talks all the time about how you can't time the market, that time in the market is better than timing the market. Right. Yeah. And in this specific time right now, you have the time and the chance to tour so many homes that will not have an offer tomorrow and really, you know, get the best home for you. So yeah. I looked yesterday and there were about 4,000 homes on the market. If you go to hillshirerealtygroup.com, you can see a counter and it shows you how many active listings are on the market at any given time. Last month, we had less than 1,500 pending sales in Portland. Year to date, we've had 19,000 closed sales. There's 4,000 homes on the market today. Options are a buyer's best friend. And if you're thinking about buying a home in a specific neighborhood, you should reach out to Vanessa or myself. And we could talk to you about like, what do the circumstances of that marketplace price point area? What does that look like for you as a buyer? And that's probably going to help you too. In this scenario of like, should I buy now or should I wait? Should I buy now or should I maybe adjust my expectations? And, you know, maybe I can't live in this city, but I have to live in this city. Maybe I can't live in a, you know, 5,000 square foot house on an acre. Not but yet. I can get a 3,000 square foot house on quarter of an acre. Right. Yeah. And if your dream is to live on that house, you know, start small. Yeah. And so just, let's just, let's just have you give a last word of advice. Gosh. Yeah. If you are trying to figure out if you should be a renter or a buyer, you know, the, the very first thing you want to think about is just how are you doing with your rental payment right now? If it's comfortable, can you push it a little bit to become a homeowner? Um, you know, and if you can, it makes sense to buy. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you'll, it's hard to convince me the way that I grew up that owning a home doesn't make sense. You know, um, when I have homeowners that go to rent, Afterwards, I always hope they don't rent for a long duration of time because I've seen how positive home ownership has been for so many people. Right. So if you have questions about buying, selling, anything Portland real estate area, real estate market specific, email me, David at Hillshire Realty Group dot com or Vanessa at Vanessa at Hillshire Realty Group dot com. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.